Hello everyone, this is Agriya Videos and the topic for today's video is Biological Weed Control Method. Already in the previous few lectures, we have talked about the many different control methods which are available across and in this video, we are going to specifically focus on the Biological Weed Control Method. Before we move ahead, please do subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you can get the notification of my upcoming videos. Now let's talk about the biological control of weeds. First of all, what is this biological control referring to? It is just simple. We are using the natural enemies to reduce the density of any particular weed to a tolerable level or to a level which can be accepted. Now, Biological control method, it uses the living agent to control the weeds. Basically, the concept is the agent, it can be insect, it can be insect species, it can be a fungus, it can be any grazing animal, anything. But it has to be a living organism or a living agent. The objective of this method of using the biological method of controlling the weed is not to eradicate but simply to reduce the weed population so that it can come to an economic level. Now, what is the basic process all about? We have an insect pest, then we have human intervention, then we have few agricultural resources and here we have the natural enemy. This can be a predator, this can be a parasitoid and this can be also an entomopathogen or any other organism for that matter. All of them interact in a system and that system gives and builds the strength of the system with the environment, biotic and abiotic factors taken all together and then we combine it to say that this is an important integrated pest management approach. Now, integrated pest management approach and method has already been taken up in many of my videos earlier. Also, you can see the reference from the link below. Now, in this particular method, as we talk about the biological control method, there are further divisions of control. One, like conservation biological control. Then we have classical biological control. Then we also have inoculation biological control. And then we have the inundation biological control. This will be taken up in the subsequent slides. Now, as we have taken a brief about uh, the topic talking about the weed control methods and now specifically talking about the biological control of weed here now what are the different steps that are involved in this method first of all selection of suitable target weed species first of all we need to identify the enemy which is our enemy what is the weed species that we are looking for first step is that second step now, we need to select a suitable biocontrol agent. There are n number of biocontrol agents available and from those n number, we have to choose the one which is relevant for us. This happens through the survey of the areas which are affected, selecting the specific and effective biological control agent for that area and then host specificity determination. These all the processes happen all together and then we come together to a point where we introduce, we liberate and we establish the, the control agents in that particular area and hence we help the system in controlling the weeds. Now, what type of biological control agents do we use in this method? The agents can be specific, the agents can be non-specific. Now, specific agents will only attack to a specific kind of weed, not to the general a weed population but non-specific can feed upon any vegetative population specific if we say then we have few insects we have plant pathogens we have competitive plants which are very specific if we talk about non-specific then we have the carp fish we have snails we have mites and many others which are also example of non-specific biocontrol agents now Examples you can see in the picture like water hyacinth moth, for example, I just pick one or two. Then we have the hygrophilia adult. If we see here about the non-specific ones, we have the common carp, we have the marisa, then we have brachiaria and others. Now, what specific biocontrol agents are we talking about? For example, if insect is the population then for the moth for lantana camera 
which is a weed, we are targeting this insect, which is a moth. For this acacia glauca and skeleton weed, for these weeds, we are targeting the plant pathogen Coccinia and Cephalosporium. Competitive plants like for Parthenium, we are using the Marigold and Cassia as the competitive plant, which is acting as a bioagent for them. For Typha, we are using Penicum. Then fish, carp fish, for example, specifically in the case of aquatic weeds, we are using these carp fishes. The examples are laid here. Then snail. Snail is also used as an as an important bioagent. Then opuntia. For opuntia, which is called as a prickly pear, we are using mite as a control agent. So there are many agents which are used to control the weed population. To describe it in a much better, in a fancy way, if we say for insect category, what like this has to be read this way. For this weed, we are using this bioagent. For this weed, we are using fish as a bioagent. For this weed, which is water hyacinth, we are using mammals as a bioagent. For hyacinth, we are using fungus as a bioagent. For snails, we are for algae, we are using snails as a bioagent. For prickly pear, we are using mite as a bioagent. And for a few of the different weeds which are available and prevalent in sorghum, then we are using plants as a biocontrol agent. So these have to be remembered as examples for the specific different category which we have to cater. Now Talking a bit more in detail about the biological control method. The bioagents like the insect, pest, pathogen, whatever they are, they are used to control weeds which we have already seen. Insects and pathogens, they infest the weeds and they either they reduce the uh, growth or they kill the weed population that they do. Biological method can reduce the weed but it is not entirely possible to eradicate the weed altogether. So this is just a good, good to know practice which we should know in terms of biological control method. Now, as we have already seen that what it includes, what are the basic ideal characteristics of a bioagent? What ideal characteristics a bioagent should have? It should be host specific, first of all. It should have the ability to kill the weed or to prevent its reproduction. It should be adaptable to the particular environment or area where it is inhabited to. Reproduction capacity of the, or uh, if we should say the rate specific to the host should be maintained. High ability should be there to disperse successfully and to locate its host, host plants. And for that, there are many, many strategies like classical approach is there. They have bioherbicide approach and they also have the naturally occurring herbicide approach. Okay. Now, as we have seen, there are major, major three categories. One is the parasite. Then we have the predators. and then we have the parasitoids. So we need to know a bit about each one of them. So talking about the parasite, you know what parasite is. It is basically an organism which is living on the other organism. The other organism will be called as the host and it will be deriving the benefits from that. There are ectoparasites which live outside and there are endoparasites which live internally. Then we have hyperparasite which is like a parasite whose host is also a parasite. This is a form of a parasitism which is very commonly seen in the entomophagus parasites. So this is a gist of parasite if we are talking about in detail. There are type of parasites, there are various type of parasites based on their modes of parasitism. The parasites are also studied basis what type of feeding habit they are having like egg, larva, pupa, what, what stage they are in and whether or more they are uh, having their progeny, they are solitary or they are gregarious. It means that gregarious is they are in multiple uh, number and solitary is that there is a single parasite in that manner. Now, the feeding habit, you sh uh, we should be knowing clearly about the feeding habit. It is that that is an egg parasite. If this, that is a larva parasite, if it is entirely a larva parasite, larva pupa parasite or pupa parasite, this should be known in terms of parasite. If we talk about the predator, predator is basically defined as a tropic level. It is a tropic level interaction in which the species is deriving the energy from the consumption of individuals of another species. So it is a kind predator is kind of an endomophagous species that is generally consuming 
मोर देन वन प्रे इंडिविजुअल टू कम्प्लीट द डेवलपमेंट सो वट वट क्वालिटीज डू द प्रिडेटर्स हैव दे आर प्रे दे हैव प्रे प्रिफरेंसेज दे हैव प्रे स्पेसिफिक इन्वायरमेंट दे हैव सूटेबिलिटी ऑफ द प्रे दे आर वेरी रिलेटेड टू द डिफरेंट पैरामीटर्स दे हैव सो प्रिडेटर्स इट इज जस्ट अबाउट द प्रिडेटर्स नाउ टॉकिंग अबाउट द पैरासिटोइड्स वॉट इज अ पैरासिटोइड इट इज एन एनिम ऑर्गेनिज्म दैट ड्यूरिंग इट्स डेवलपमेंट लिवस और on the body of a single host individual eventually it kills the individual for example if we say we have asp here which is for example if we say then we have the brachinoid brachonid wasp here then we have calcid wasp here that there there are many wasp which are examples of the parasitoids because they are specialized in their choice of host they choose their host very specially smaller than the host um like this is normal only the female will search for the host immature will remain or on or in the host adults are free living mobile and they may be predators and immatures always uh, they almost always kill the host uh, to be precise so parasitoid example you can see here these are having complete development in the different stages adult parasitoids they are free living only female parasitoids are significant players it should be known so this is just a bit about them bio agents and we this is just a reminder you should know which ones to pick uh, please do mention it in the comment box below uh, if you are able to identify the bio agent and the weed mentioned in the picture in the diagram you can see so you should be able to relate which one is which in the image now just talking about the advantages and few disadvantages of this method of biological control first of all advantage is that this is a low cost method it has the potential for to be permanent it is not harmful to the non target organisms even not no toxicity or the residue problem is there the pest is unable to develop a resistance in this case selectively it does not intensify or create any new pest problem so in a way it is a good method now talking about the uh disadvantages which include that it is not always applicable this cannot be uh, used every time because it is not uh, that user friendly level of control may be different maybe no maybe uh, a field is having a high infestation and this could not be controlled with the number of biocontrol means we have so this can be a problem research cost is very high to identify that which bioagent can be against can be used against which um, speaking it requires expert supervision it is difficult and expensive to develop and supply all together these are mentioned here also in advantages and the limitations category and to uh, uh, to add to the point it is a slow process a process it takes a lot of time and patience in if you are working with the biocontrol agents because it is working very slowly on the pest population I hope the content is useful please do subscribe to my channel hit the bell icon so that you can get the notification of the upcoming videos if you like my videos please do hit the like button and if you have any comments any views any improvement points for me please do mention it in the comment box